Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. I welcome you all. Hallelujah. Let me give a shout of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you all for being your places today, just being in positions as well. We give glory unto the Lord for He has made this day in the name of Jesus Christ. He has fashioned this day. He has prepared every one of us for such a time and day as this. And this day is a day that's important unto the Lord upon every, unto every one of us. So I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I celebrate the Lord. Uh, I truly give honor where honor is due. I give honor to our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, who art in heaven, our Lord Jesus. We thank God for His Spirit, Holy Ghost, for the fact that Spirit of the Lord, none of us will be where we are today. And I truly thank God for the mercy of God upon every one of us because His mercy has truly kept us in many ways. And so, truly thank God for His grace. And I want to give honor unto our Apostle, Apostle De Hamilton, as he is here. If you have the liberty to give a cover of praise unto him, from His precious life, there is no Hamilton, our Christian mother. The Lord truly bless him God for everything they do for every one of us. It's never in vain. Even the secret works which we do not see. And it's truly also important. I give also honor to every other and every minister and sons and daughters. He is the queen of the most high in Jesus' name. And may be seated in the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The title today is Why It Was Written of Me. Why It Was Written of Me. Hallelujah. If you have your notebooks, your pens, you can write down Hebrews. Oh no, no. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. And the title is, Why It Was Written on Me. So this is something that's already written. It's past tense. That it has to come to pass. So I would think about why it is written, but most of why. Amen. So, therefore, why it was written on me. So we have to journey in the past to understand why it was written about us, where we came from, who we are, who we are to represent. So all that is written about us. So there's somebody we must represent regardless. Amen. So therefore, title is why it was written of me. Not anybody else. Why it was written concerning John. What is written concerning you. So we're going to start off with Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Hebrews 10 Verse 7. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 7. In Jesus' name. Hebrews 10, verse 7. Anybody that is taken, go ahead and read it. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 7. Go ahead, John. Amen. And let me do one from the left side. Uh, let me assist the knees up and read it for us. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 7 reads, Then I said, Behold, I have come to do the will of God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. In the scroll. Amen. Mine said, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. So everything that is written about us, the end result is to do the will of the Father. Because even Yeshua demonstrated that I didn't come to do what I want to do. I came to do the will of my Father. That even that my meal is not to eat, even though he ate physical things, but his main course was to do the will of the Father. So therefore, I have come to do the will of the Father. I came to do the will of the Father, and I will continue to do the will of the Father until my last breath in this world is what I must do the will of the Father. Because Yeshua, since birth, he demonstrated that I must be about my Father's business. And so, therefore, the Father's business is doing the will of God. So, I'm going to do that until the end of my time on earth. So, my question is today what is written of you? And that's a question for anybody to answer. What do you believe has been written about you? Anybody? Go on, let me pick on you. Moluli, what is written about you? Hallelujah. 
Praise Allah, Brother John. What is written about you? No, I'm get everybody to answer their comments. What is written about you? You know, concerning the scriptures. LDT, what is written about you? What has Jehovah said about you in his book? Uh, one time, uh, Jehovah told Praise the Lord. My name goes to the left. Sister Lisa, what has the Lord written about you? Amen. Amen. Sister Samar, what has the Lord written about you? I know what I'm thinking. And Elijah, give me one thing the Lord said about you also. And what has the Lord said about you? What is written about you that you know? Or what has your what has your dad told you about who you are? Amen, amen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let me ask your pops also. What is the Lord hearing about you? Uh, Kevin and Isaiah, Isaiah 58 says that I will be a repairer for many generations. And I will be a repairer of the breach, one who restores past. Mr. Bosco. Uh, every time I read the program, I'm saying thank you. Uh, thank you. you know, um, I, was, I was in 
important to me for for my family. Um, that makes all the sense of difference. You know, and um, that's not nothing for the most. Praise the Lord. Now let's read it one more time. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of Terence. It is written of Boscombe. It is written of every single person upon the face of the earth to do the will of God. Now we know that because it is written about us by God, that what God has written about us, is it possible that there's things and people that we have to leave behind regardless because of what he has written about us? Is it possible? We know that they, even the apostles, when Yeshua called them, two of them was with the father in the boat. Yeshua called them. What did they do? They left immediately. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't think twice. Oh, I'm with my father. No, they just left. Because it was written by them that in this time, I will call them forth. So they had to think about what they're going to say. Because, because it's written, it was predestined long ago that now the manifestation came. Now it has come. So it must come to pass. So therefore, that was also the will of God for them to leave the Father in their boat. The Father could have rebelled. We don't know if the Father rebelled. It, it, it is the same the scripture. But either way, the thing is that they obeyed and they left. Because they heard a sound. That sound was the right sound for them. Because it confirmed that this is the right time also. So let me go. So therefore, what is written about you by God, because he's the author and the finisher of your work, that means you must obey what is written. Now is, there, now, is there times where we don't feel like doing what is written about it? Yes, there is. There's many times that we have rebelled also, but yet mercy found us. Mercy gave us another chance to be able to do it again. Grace came, do it again. Because grace helps us to do the things we, which we cannot do. Now, what is written about you? You must need grace regardless. You cannot operate outside of grace. And what, what else you need? You will need the Spirit of God. Because everything written about it, because it came from God himself, you will need his spirit to help you. He must be the one that guides you. Now you got in him, he guides you. The Bible says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are what? Sons of God. They are his offspring. So the way that God designed men, this, that the way that God designed this creature coming is that they must be led by only the spirit of God. Only one thing is able to drive this car and only the spirit of God. We, us, we don't have the driver license. Because if we try to drive ourselves, we will crash. But the Spirit of the Lord, He's the one only that has the right driver's license to drive this vehicle called man. Are we together? So therefore, we can find ourselves that many people are under different influences of different spirit because they've been led by different, different things. But we, created by God, must be led by one thing, the Spirit of God alone. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, now, there's, there's a teaching the apostle did a while back. You know, he talks about what, he, he asked the question in that teaching, let's see what is written in Peter's book. What is written in Yeshua's book? What is written in John's book? And he began to lift them down. What was written? What was written in Yeshua's book is that he had to die on the cross. That was something he could not escape, but that was the will of the Father. What was written in his book is Gethsemane. He had to go through that, but he could not escape it. Golgotha, he could not escape it, but that was written in his book. Paul had to suffer also. Paul, in the only book, suffering is written in our book. I hope you all know that. Suffering is written in all of our book. Affliction is written there. Hardship is written. Whether you're in Christ or out of Christ, is written in God's. Because even though he was a son, he learned obedience to the which what he suffered. So therefore, suffering is written in our book. Now your suffering, my suffering, is different. How you go handle the how you go handle it is this a person two people can be struggling with the same thing, but the way that Yeshua is going to deliver it is different. He can use one scripture for one person, another scripture for the same for another person with the same struggle because your calling his calling is different. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews eleven, verse twenty-three. Hallelujah. He was written of me. 
Now we know that there is an identity that we have been written about us long before we were born. And that is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because that is our identity. Even though also, whenever we came into this world, we were introduced to a life of sin that did not stop God from writing that you are still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because who do we belong to first? We belong to God. Who do we came from? We came from the Lord. Who made it in his image and likeness? God. So therefore, even though we, even though we was in the world, the stamp of my image and likeness was still dead. It never disappeared. He never changed who you are. It's just the fact we changed. Amen. So let's read Hebrews 11 verse 23. Hallelujah. Let me give you this. Verse 23. So they were not afraid. So we see that. By faith, Moses. So that means that our brethren had to, had to do something with faith. Because we also came, because our birth, faith had to be there. So therefore, because faith was present at our birth, that means also we must live by the thing called faith through our entire life. You came by faith. You must live in faith. And even after you live, you must still work, go out in faith. Because your birth was something supernatural. Not, even though it happened naturally, it had to take something supernatural for all of us to be born. For you to be kept in your mother's womb for nine months, it took something supernatural. It took power for your mother to keep you. For you to be kept in your mother's womb, it took power. For you to remain there until nine months passed, it took power. And for you to come out, it took power. So therefore, our birth is supernatural. Even though we can see something natural, because and even though whenever we were born, something took place when, when you were born. Every one of us here. Something took place spiritually, naturally, emotionally, it also, it took place even financially also, believe it or not. Because you were not the only one that was, that was feeling the commotion, your parents too. So by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months. So that means also that whenever you were born, there's some things that your parents had to stop doing. There's some things also that, because they saw that he was a beautiful child, they were not afraid of the king's command. When you were born, your parents, either way they received you. Some people spoke up, some people spoke against you, but it did not stop them from still carrying you. It didn't stop them from them giving up on you. So therefore, they were not afraid of the command for people around you, or people around them, because many people were against your birth. Many people that was against you coming, many people was against your identity in Christ, but yet he never stopped your parents from saying, this child must still come out regardless. So therefore, Moses' parents, they, they were not afraid of the king's command, your parents also. There was things that they heard that now, nah, even, even though you may say this, I'm not losing my child. Because this one must come regardless. So therefore, your birth was an act of faith also. We still together? Praise the Lord. Now let's go to jump verse 24 by faith. Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now why would Moses refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? Anybody? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you can see also that whenever you was born, there was an anointing that was assigned to your life. There was a calling that was assigned to your life. Whenever you were, even when you was in your mother's womb, there was an ordination that took place before you were born naturally that you were still assigned to. So even when you was in your, in your mother's womb, there's some things that was written that you did not know about while you was in your mother's womb. And we can see that whenever 
Samson, before, before Samson was the conceived Samson, there was a mandate that the angel of the Lord spoke concerning it, that what she must do concerning this child. You must not cut his hair at all. Samson didn't know that, but that was written about him in his book, out the way, that his hair could not be cut. His mother couldn't give him, she couldn't give himself herself to, to wine. Even a drop of wine, she couldn't. Because what she's carrying with that valuable. Now also, the anointing within, the anointing that Samson carried with him, with, with the anointing that Samson was carrying, he also stopped her from drinking wine. So there's some things also that our parents had to give up because of what they were carrying. There's some things that, there's things that they were entertaining before you came, that once they received you, they had to stop doing. Even you for a while, they had to stop it. Because what you carry is that valid. So the angel don't told Samson's mother, do not do this, do not do that. We see that with John the Baptist, mother Elizabeth. The angel of the Lord came and told us another instruction. Don't do this and don't do that. Because what you carry, this one, is very important. So it was written about you also. So that is a law of consecration. When you were to your mother's womb, consecration began for your parents. Because they had to obey. If they mess up anything, one, even, if they mess up even just one of those instructions, it would have altered what you were sent for to do. It would have changed a lot of things in the universe within the world because you were came to fix some things in the world. Not all things, but some things. Amen. So therefore, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter. Now the reason why he was refused, he refused. There's a time in our life whenever we begin to know who we are in Christ. There's things that people used to call it that when, whenever we hear it again, we are like, that's not me no more. People used to call it, whenever we were in the world, we would call each other the B word, but now you're in Christ. You can't hear, you cannot adhere to that name no more. Why is that? That's not you no more. Because now you know that it, because now you know that what's written by me, that this B word is not my name. That's not who I am anymore. Even though you may, you may, even though you were, you were the person who smoked in the world, they call you a smoker, that's not you no more, because now you were born again, now you are in Christ. So now, now, so now, if you call me that, I gotta refuse it, because that's not who I am. So Moses refused to be called the son of God, that's not me no more. Because when I checked in the volume of, of the book which is about me, it says that I'm the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the beloved of God. Like Isaac, so am I, a child of the promise. So what is written in your book? Now let's go to verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the present pleasures of sin. What have you forsaken? What have you forsaken? Because of, because the word is written about you. Who have you left behind? Because the word is written about you. And there's still more things for you to leave behind also. There's still more things for us even to, there's still more people that we can leave behind also. So don't get comfortable with holding your boat right now because some people must leave. And Yeshua, whenever they went, they went, they went on the other side, it was only 12. But that's all they could fit. Who can fit in your boat? Not everybody can fit. So what have you left behind because of what is written about you? And that's a question for anybody to ask. What have you left behind? Anybody else? One more person. Yeah, I think a whole bunch of things. Well, like they said, uh, beautiful daughter of the man, the soul of 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 the soul Uh, and I left uh, behind, and I went, I 
where I went. I wanted to make sure that I went with me. I wanted to stay with me. So whatever it took, you know, I think that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I feel like I started to go quiet, you know. Uh, and so and one of the things that I believe that even now, I know you see us things that we have conflict that go on, you know, uh, I feel like quiet sometimes comes in and out. So I can't say that I'm actually humble, but I am praying and hoping that God will continue to use me to be the man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we see that even though when it was in the world, for example, also like as he just said, people pleasing, that was a pleasure of sin, believe it or not. But yet he got to the point in verse 26 where it says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure of Egypt. That, that people pleasing was a riches of itching. Because when you was in that part of your life, you was in itching and you enjoyed that place of sin. But then now that you're in Christ, you now esteem Christ higher. You esteem Christ higher above the things you did because now he said for he looked to the reward. Now you see Christ is my reward. Even though I can enjoy people pleasing, I can't just, I can't go out like that. I must see him that's invisible. Because there's one that's greater than people pleasing. There's one that's greater than lust. There is one that's greater than fornicating. A person can fornicate for many years, but there's going to come a time where is this all about me or is this more written upon me? Will this ever be it? Is it just soccer in my life? Is it just basketball or what else is there to me? A person can stop at soccer and then you will never know who you really are. A person can stop at just basketball. You can just stop at the activities which you see in your house. But John the Baptist, even though he saw that his father was the priest, I can't just stop being a priest. If I know there's something else rich in front of me that I must go to the wilderness. Why? Why am I being called to the wilderness? I'm, I just gotta go there. Because I know if I stay in my father's house, I'll be a priest. And I'm entertained. Repeat the cycle that he repeated. I just can't. I must go to the wilderness. And that was rich enough by him. And the wilderness is different for everybody. Everybody has a path that they must go called the wilderness. In this path, you cannot escape it. Because in the midst of you coming to Christ, Ben believe Yeshua is going to drag you through the wilderness. Because he's going to have to, he has to reveal things to you that's within your heart and things that are written about you before eternity. Before you came on earth, he has to reveal things about you. So that wilderness is going to expose your heart. It's going to expose what is within you. It's going to expose your mindset. And it's also going to expose things, things, things that Christ has said about you. And that's when you begin to receive transformation. Because the wilderness is going to transform your heart. It's going to transform your mind. But well, you got to be okay with that transformation. Because a person can be in the process and they can take themselves out. Yeah. We can see that even though, even though the children of Israel, they got to the Red Sea. When they saw Pharaoh, they began to say, oh, why did you take us out of Egypt? Right. I want to go back. So you can be in the midst of a saying like, being a prayer life, ah, I like 30 minutes and now you probably to go an hour. You're praising for that, like, ah, it's too hard. Let me go back. I'm tired of praying. Do not stop the process. Don't take yourself out. The process of you knowing who you are in Christ, man, is a tough process at, at times. At times, it's going to be peaceful. At times, it's going to be, it's going to be restless. Because you're going to be like, I have not, I have no rest yet. I have not rested yet. But it's okay, though, because why? You have the Spirit of God guiding you. You're not doing it out of being glory or out of pain. So to know who you are in Christ, it's still a price you must pay. But that takes you in doing that transformation. And do it all the way until you come out the fire. The Hebrew boys, they had to endure the fire until they saw him, that was, until they saw the fourth in the fire. And then when they saw him, they came out also. You know, the clothes as well, everything was all about them. So in the midst of what God said about you, because he did say that you too will cast out demons. So don't limit yourself just to cast out demons. That's just power. But you still must also have the nature of Christ. Or you must represent righteousness and holiness, not just around your friends, or even to those who don't like you. But you don't just stop there also. You must also exemplify the wisdom of God that how can I run my household? How can I can I, how can I, how can I build a business also that's going to glorify God? So the wisdom of God is still needed. We don't just stop there also. We still need understanding as well. Because what is written by you also, even if you can cast out demons, yes, you can do all that, that, but then the Lord said, many were sent to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not do that? You walked in their power, but yet you never knew who I was. You never tapped in what was written about you. Because when you know what's written about you, you, you must know who the writer is. It's, you must know. 
You must know the author. Because if you, don't, if, you don't know, if you don't know who the author is, you will never know what is written about you. So if you don't know Christ, you can be like, ah, I'm only supposed to be a business, a businessman. No, oh, there was something else because there's ordination that you were sent forth also. You didn't choose it, but there's ordination you were sent forth. So in that business, you, you, you may be an apostle in that business, but you only think, ah, I'm just a businessman. That's it. There's something more to it. The Lord, the Lord told us that we are to go make disciples in His name. So that is written about you and me in all of our books. Make disciples. It's written about us also that men always ought to pray. And this is written in every person's book because every man must pray. Can you escape it? No, because it's written about you. You shall heal the sick. So He gave us, he gave us access right into this. You shall heal the sick. But it's only for those who are in Christ. You shall raise the dead. It's written about us to raise the dead. So you don't just stop it, just cast out demons. No, it's more than that. Yes, sir. It's more than just saying, I fast 40 days. Yeshua fasted and what he did, he walked in power after that. But he didn't just stop and walk in power. He still had to also show even to other people that even though I am God on earth, I still can be vulnerable because he also cried. He still cried. He still has fellowship. So one thing is about you also, you must you must have fellowship also. You must have fellowship. And you must do the will of the Father. Now let's go to verse 29 for the sake of time. And he says, By faith they kept they by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempted to do so were drowned. What I received from this also is that there's things, if me and you, let's say, let's say I was going on a fast, right? And somebody alongside me that be praying with, they're like, you know, you're about to go on a fast, let me go with you. Say, by faith, they kept, they passed through the Red Sea as, as dry land. God has given me the grace to do that fast. So I will pass by dry land. Now you are tempted to go alongside with me. That's because I received the grace. God didn't give you the grace to go alongside with me, but you chose to. So therefore, I will pass through the Red Sea because I received access granted. But you want to tag along, but yet God not give the instruction. You will be like Pharaoh who, dry, who drowned in the Red Sea because you did not receive the access. So even though you're not receiving the grace, the mercy of God will find you there. Where now you're like, ah, I feel like I, I'm, 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 I'm able to do it. You can do it, but you will still drown along the way. Because you'll go weary of that fact because it will not fool you because it was for me. So even though you can be praying with somebody, pray with the grace that God has given unto you. Because you will receive access granted to pass through the Red Sea. Somebody else take along. If not, if God did not send them, they will be like power and drown under, and they will drown also. Because they're tempted to do what you're doing. Receive the son of Steve, but they didn't receive the grace to go and do what, what Paul was doing. But they say, I'll come in the name of Paul. But yet what happened? It wasn't written about them to do it yet. So they attempted it and they drowned. So whatever God has given you to do, grace will come and you will pass through the Red Sea with no problem. But you must pass all the way till you get to the other side. But don't just stop there because it's written about us to go to the promised land. So in this, in this life we're living, we live in this life, but something else written about you also. That they that live should, should no longer live for themselves, but should live for him who was, who died and rose again. So that is written about you. So as you're born again, it is the will of God that you must live this life, not for yourself. It's not by me, myself, and I no more. You receive the will life of God, and now everything about you die. You want to go to court, you, you want to go to sleep at a certain time, where if the Lord calls you to pray at that time, you must obey because why? This life is not my own anymore. I don't own it. There was, there was a time you couldn't rebel. But now I live as a way life. And at this life, it was a gift to me. So the one that gave it to me, if he assigned me something, I might go home and say, okay, let me just go ahead and do it. Because why? This life that I live, is not my own anymore. But now I live for him who died for me. And that rose again. Amen. So therefore, what is written about me? I'm ask that one more time. Is affliction written about you? Is suffering written about you? Is trials and tribulation written about you? Is it written that he would, he would, he would, by all means, 
He will, he will deliver you from every temptation. Is there written about you? Is there written that he's a very present help in times of trouble? Is there written that I will never leave you nor forsake you? It's written that I will, it's written that the Lord loves the right. It is written that like Isaac, so am I a child of promise. So we know that these things are written about us. Now can we live it out? Can you express it? How many of you read, how many of you will put in the image and likeness of God? Now how many of us are living his image? How many of us are living the likeness? Now a person can just live the image of God but never the likeness. But his image in likeness. So I must have his nature. And I must look like him. So we must, in the midst of being created in his image and likeness, I must understand that my suffering is not for myself, it's for Christ. There's times I want to tap out. Yeah, there's times it comes. But if I tap out now, what happens to everybody else that couldn't do so? Yeshua endured the cross. You got a cross also to carry. But this cross, you're carrying it not for yourself, for the kingdom of God. You got an altar. Every man got an altar. But the altar, you must raise incense, not, not to the devil, to God. So even though you're here right now, to a best belief, your altar is active. Because your mindset, you're conscious about God. So each time you're conscious about God, you're raising incense unto Yeshua. It's not just only in prayer. Every time you do things concerning the, the things of God, you keep the wood on the fire so you continue to burn. But best believe, the fire is easy to quench. So let us stand to our feet in the name of Jesus.